ago, we had the author and historian Hugh Ryan on the show to talk about his new book, When Brooklyn Was Queer. The joke is, of course, that Brooklyn is currently so queer that I would be hard-pressed to name a straight person. Our next guest is pushing back against the scourge of straight invisibility, going so far as to write a book about her experience dating people of the opposite sex. I read it, you guys, and I am shook. The lives of straight women are marked with seemingly insurmountable hardships, all because they choose to date men. And in the eternal words of modern-day sage Monique, when you do clownery, the clown comes back to bite. Blythe Robertson's book, How to Date Men When You Hate Men, is a revealing book about this poorly understood community. And even if you don't agree with her lifestyle, her words are important, and we are pleased to welcome Blythe to the show. Hi, thank you for having me. Um, so Blythe, you uh, identify as a straight, is that right? <laughs> I do, although a lot of queer women on Twitter are tweeting at me that I'm secretly gay, but... How do you feel about that? Do you think that you are secretly gay? I, I don't know. They've really made me stop and consider. I'm like, what will my fans think if I start <laughs> exclusively dating women? Men. But for now, I'm only dating men. That would make an excellent sequel. And I yeah. will say anecdotally, <laughs> I only dated men until I was 27. And look at me now. There can <laughs> be a brighter future ahead for you. Um, was it hard for your parents when you told them that you were straight? Were they worried that it'd be harder for you? Mm -hmm. They, you know, I try to tell my parents as little as possible, but I think they're probably <laughs> still very worried for me. Your dedication is to your family who should not read the book. Yeah, exactly. Have people in your family read the book? They all read the book. Although my... Mom has kept one of my aunts from reading it, and my dad has kept my grandma from reading it. Was there a specific moment or relationship that inspired you to write this book? Um, you know, I wish that there was a great story behind it, but there really wasn't. I wa knew I wanted to write a book, so I thought about what books I really loved, and one of them was A Lover's Discourse by Roland Bart. And uh, I was like, oh, I wish I could write something like that. And the chapters are like three to five pages. So for a book that has a really cute cover and a funny title and looks like it might be sold at Urban Outfitters. Yeah. You cite Bart a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, what do you what do you like about about his writings on relationships and romance? I read uh, The Marriage Plot by Jeffrey Eugenides, mm -hmm. which I forgot that I read that exclusively because I was like obsessed with David Foster Wallace. And I was like, this is a book about what it would be like to date David Foster Wallace. And uh, the heroine of that book is really into uh, a lover's discourse. So I read it and it was just like a lot of really heady stuff that I didn't really connect to. And a lot of uh, citing like the sorrows of young Verther, which I didn't care about at all. But then it was stuff like uh, the lover th believes that he is loved, but also believes that he's not loved. And like, that is why he's caused so much pain. And I'm like, oh my God, that's me. Like, no one wants to date me, but I also truly believe everyone is secretly in love with me. Bart, and I feel so seen. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So it was like those kind of small things where I was like, even the most brilliant man and like the most stupid woman me like feel the same way in love I guess so you do a lot of qualification in your introduction especially yeah. because your title um is I imagine might be off-putting to some people right. you have to explain what you mean by hating men and what you mean by men right um so maybe you could just give us a little a little glimpse into that yeah yeah so <laughs> a lot of people have asked me if I hate all men and it just makes everyone sound like a cop I feel like when they <laughs> <laughs> like obviously I don't hate all men right um but then why'd yeah. you call your book that <laughs> yeah and I'm like I don't know leave me alone um but I cite uh Mary Poppins in my intro which is like an insane thing to be the foundation of my politics but in the suffragette song that the bank's kid's mom like sings in the beginning she's like Though we adore men individually, we agree that as a group, they're rather stupid, uh, which is kind of like where my book is coming from. That's like, an obscure Mary Poppins song. Yeah. I do have to say that's not the ones that people go to. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah. And I just I love men individually. Obviously, I've written a whole book about having crushes on them, about dating them. But as a group, they have all the structural power over us, and that's what I don't like, and that's what I'm trying to navigate. Uh, and I say in my intro that I'm talking about the men that have the most privilege are like white, cis, straight, educated, um, conventionally attractive men. Even the wokest bro yeah. is a product of systemic 
patriarchal thinking. Even those people are uncomfortable dating a woman who is like more successful than they are, even though they know that they shouldn't feel badly about that. You refer that. to these people as um, PIWBs, professionally <laughs> insecure woke boys. Yeah, yeah. And it took me a while to even realize that happened to me like five times before I was like, this is a pattern. It's not like I write in the book that I thought, oh, these people didn't like me in particular. And they were just trying to come up with an excuse, like grasping at a reason. Because I feel like no one wants to be super rude to other people when they, you know, turn them down or when they break up with them. So they're like, oh, I just feel weird that like you're on the right of your life and I'm, you know, not doing anything. But then I'm like, oh, that's actually society telling men that they should feel uncomfortable with that. Yeah, I thought this was a really interesting chapter because you talk about these professionally insecure woke boys who are like, no, I'm a total feminist. I just personally am, yeah. am uncomfortable dating a woman who's more successful than I am. Yeah. And then you also talk about um, this, you know, active man, passive woman type situation where women spend a lot of their time, especially in their teen years, watching yes. boys do things that they aren't allowed to do for some reason. Right. And I've often wondered, I feel like a lot of female pioneers who succeed in male dominated fields like the Sally Rides yeah. end up being gay. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And do you think that there's a connection there? Yeah, I wonder. I mean, Eleanor Roosevelt, another great example. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> yeah, I, there probably is. I mean, and I should say that the watching men do things is something that I had never even realized I did. And then I read this wonderful essay by Claire V. Watkins, I want to say is her name. Um, and I was just like, oh, my God, I do that all the time. Let's talk a little bit about your own relationship history. So, um, you write about how you have been bad at flirting, or you were bad at flirting right. for a large portion of your life. And you said that there were times when you thought that you were being aggressive, but that actually you were reading Jonathan Branson's The Corrections in a hot guy's direction while standing in line for an <laughs> improv show. And you were like, I'm being so bold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How did you get better? And what are your general flirting tips for Ooh. men and women? Yeah, interesting. Okay, I think a lot of getting better for me was, and this is so annoying if I was watching this I'd be like that is not a tip but I feel like just being more like loving to myself and confident in myself is just like attractive to other people in a way that makes no sense to me I write that I'm not on apps and so I have to follow up whenever I see a hot person I just like have to talk to that person I have to like get their information and I feel like people are just everyone is like a gaping hole that wants to be loved. And if you just pay attention to anyone, they will be nice to you, I think. So just like follow up and like talk to people. That's if you were on a dating app, that would be a great dating profile. Just <laughs> yeah. a gaping hole who wants to be loved. Be loved. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. You mentioned that you're not on apps because you feel like they promote a capitalist commodities yeah. based system. I mean that like we you create a profile for yourself where you're like this is my logo. This this is like what my brand is. These are the most attractive photos of me that like a consumer would want. So you're kind of like obviously thinking not about who you really are but like what is the most attractive version of you and then on the other end you're like seeing every person as like a potential uh, I know you're basically like shopping for a boyfriend kind of or it's like almost a game uh, and you have so much choice that you feel like there's always someone better out there and it's really easy to like dehumanize people which is not necessarily I think the best starting point for like trying to connect with someone. I just feel like it's hard enough to as a woman in society to feel worth divorced from whether or not I'm fuckable uh, and that was just going to make it worse. Who are you seeing right now? Can you divulge this? Um, yeah, I feel bad because it's so early in the relationship, but a, a very nice, for once in my life, I'm seeing someone who's, like, not a creative person. He, like, loves the Yankees and, like, is, like, an <laughs> athlete. He, like, wakes up and does pull-ups. It's crazy. And I'm like, <laughs> like, oh, my God, wow, humans can have bodies. Uh, yeah, he's very nice. Talk to me about, so you're, you're a comedian, um, yes. and you write about the concept of punching up. Yeah, and yeah. And you apply that to flirting. What do you mean by that? Right. So in comedy, punching up is like when you are trying to figure out if a joke is okay um, to make one standard. And it's not like foolproof, but is like, are you making fun of someone who has less power than you? If so, that's not cool. So like you, there was a lot of talk. That's bullying. Right, that's bullying. Mm. So Lindy West wrote a an essay about this when the whole like rape joke thing was going on when everyone's like, is it okay to joke about rape? And she was like, if you're making fun of people who get raped, that's punching down. Those are people who have no power. But if you're making fun of like rapists or rape culture, that's like a different thing. Um, 
so that's just like an easy rule of thumb for comedy. And I was thinking about flirting in the workplace even before the whole Harvey Weinstein stuff broke. And I was just like, it's you have to make sure you're not flirting with someone who has like wildly less power than you do because those people like if you are an intern like a female intern and the CEO is flirting with you you can't just like be like you gross don't talk to me and like report him to HR because like he's the head of everything so it was just kind of a way to be like when you're flirting with someone at work specifically which is already kind of like a quagmire think about that before you do that seems like such a no-brainer. Yeah, and yet <laughs> we're living in a world in which everyone is harassing everyone. Right, so, we have to find yeah. all of these different metaphors and analogies to help people understand this concept. Exactly, yeah. Um, you mentioned rom-coms. You were raised on a healthy diet yeah. of romantic comedies. How do you feel like they informed your sense of what romance should be like and why is Tom Hanks the villain of You Got Me? <laughs> I think everyone right now in America is kind of on the train of realizing that Tom Hanks and You've Got Mail is so creepy. Um, I, I wasn't. Really? I mean, I have to say, I couldn't tell you much about the plot of You've Got Mail. Yeah. But this was the first, you know, it's like how there's um, a group of people who think that Grandpa Joe from Charlie and Chalk Factory is an <laughs> asshole in a waste of human <laughs> yeah. space. Like, there's this whole rich subculture of people yeah. writing about it and getting tattoos that yeah. I wasn't aware of. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, I mean, check yeah. it out. Go down that rabbit hole sometime. <laughs> yeah. And I didn't know either that there is yeah. a group of people who are like, Tom Hanks is objectively the worst human alive in the film You've Got Mail. Yeah, I had rewatched it uh, just because I rewatch it like once a year. And like a couple of years ago, I was like, wait a second. He is not funny at all. Like this is such a Nora Ephron problem, I think, because it's the same with Billy Crystal in When Harry Met Sally. But he says things like they would be a joke, like they have the cadence of a joke, but they're not funny. And he's like very rich, which is not inherently evil but is close to inherently evil but it helps you be evil exactly yeah and he like laughs when he's like oh a small bookstore just closed and then laughs and his whole family laughs and he's just like is curmudgeon -y, and he's dating parker posey and doesn't like her but won't break up with her and just has all these problems and then at the end of the movie he knows that like meg ryan has a crush on him he knows that they're pen pals and she doesn't know and then he just like gaslights her for the entire like last third of the movie which I think is what most people agree is like very 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 not cool uh and just we're meant to think that it's this beautiful love story but actually he's like a bad person who has no he doesn't like change at all over the movie he has no redemption arc and then he just like gets to date Meg Ryan at the end it's so it's so absurd for the second movie he gets he ends up with her yes exactly I yeah. feel like this is always a really good cultural barometer when yeah. you haven't watched one of your favorite films in a year two years and you watch it again you're like oh I have changed as has society and yeah. what we deem to be okay yeah you would think that the part of you've got mail that didn't hold up is like AOL right <laughs> but it's, it's really it's, Tom it's the Hanks. you've got mail trope right yeah. exactly but it's actually Tom Hanks as a human yeah thank you so much I really enjoyed reading the book it's very funny thank you um, and I'm glad that you are in a relationship with a human who seems to be <laughs> worthwhile also I recommend women at some point but yeah. you know you gotta do you <laughs> thank you thank you